uh, looks pretty good. So we did the ramp door. Uh, we did the entire inside trailer. Um, and then the next thing we did, we painted all of the wood on the inside of the trailer. The ceiling, the walls, everything we painted white. Um, so we could get more reflective uh, light out of it. Uh, we installed LEDs in place of the factory bulbs they had in here. We ran some LED strips on both sides the whole length of the trailer. up Mopar fam I hope everybody's having a blessed day out there today's video we're gonna do a little update and uh, basically a follow-up on the new trailer we got uh, this is the new frostbite hauler trailer um, we got an enclosed trailer as you guys seen in the previous video where we started ripping everything apart and uh, getting ready to upgrade and repair some stuff on it so today's a uh, a video on the inside we pretty much have everything done on the inside of the trailer um, we're starting to work on the outside of the trailer now um, but yeah it's come a long way and uh, it's been kind of fun been a lot of work but let's check it out so there's a uh, Zorro as you guys know that's the Challenger so this is the outside of the trailer um, we ended up getting a pace enclosed trailer this is a used one this is a believe it or not this is a 1998 trailer uh, it's in pretty good shape um, I just pressure washed everything earlier this morning now we just got to kind of get the decals and um, everything taken care of we're gonna leave that checkered flag dilly um, but obviously we're gonna get rid of that sharp racing uh, letters and then uh, whatever that's supposed to be some kind of futuristic race something I don't know um, but we're gonna get rid of that and we're gonna put our own stuff on there don't know what we're gonna put yet but that's uh kind of what we're going for we're gonna put probably the YouTube stuff on there so here's the ramp door um, we did the whole entire floor in the rust-oleum garage uh, epoxy kit that you can get at Home Depot and uh, we ended up going with like the blue and white gray uh, kind of glitter flakes or whatever you want to call it with the gray the dark gray color uh, looks pretty good so we did the ramp door uh, we did the entire inside trailer um, and then the next thing we did we painted all of the wood on the inside of the trailer the ceiling the walls everything we painted white um, so we could get more reflective uh, light out of it uh, We installed LEDs in place of the factory bulbs they had in here. We ran some LED strips on both sides the whole length of the trailer um, Which does a tremendous amount. They are insanely bright when it's dark outside and I flip the light on it is it's perfect It's like the perfect amount of light um, Those LED lights are awesome um, I'm gonna try to put them in the link in this video. So if you guys are interested in them they are jam up jelly tight. They're 12 volt lights, so they wire right up to a regular 12 volt battery and it works fantastic. Uh, the next thing we did, uh, we did, I recoded, I painted over the uh, fenders on the inside of the trailer with bed liner, uh, one of those do it yourself kits. And then I took some of the leftover glitter I had and kind of threw it on those just to kind of keep it flowing. Um, floor turned out excellent. I'm, I really like the floor. Uh, we like I said we started kind of decorating a little bit. Uh, we got some of my straps hung up over here We got my torque storm clock. That's actually made out of uh, The the front of one of their superchargers. That's actually the billet piece for the entire supercharger pretty awesome uh, But yeah, that's the clock and the clock actually works too So we got the clock mounted up. We got my Mopar sign uh, one of the Christmas presents from the wife Got it mounted on the door. Um, went through some of my decals and 
started just putting decals kind of everywhere. Um, we did the step. Oh, I got the outside door actually locked, but that step we did in bed liner and glittered it also. Um, Harbor Freight. There's a lot of cool things at Harbor Freight and some not so cool, but I do shop at Harbor Freight a lot. Um, so for the trailer, I was like, you know what? It's hard to beat. I'm just going to get a a bottom bench toolbox from them that toolbox is $3.99 brand new so I went and bought it um, I was gonna get black but they didn't have any black ones and I'm impatient I wanted to get a lot of this done this past weekend so I just went ahead and got white and uh, what we did with that we mounted them we, we raised the toolbox up off the floor uh, we ran some all thread through the floor uh, two pieces actually on both sides um, through some uh, four by six blocks all the way through the floor bolted those blocks down um, then we uh, and then we have attached uh, the toolbox to those blocks with some very long lag bolts so the toolbox is permanently attached um, and then the winch was already in the trailer uh, we didn't move the winch at all we left it there uh, so the winch is kind of tucked up underneath there. Pretty cool. Uh, the battery is over here behind my little portable boom box over here. Uh, we mounted a little hook here to hold some extension cords and some jumper cables. Um, mounted a hook right here. Works out pretty nice. Holds my helmet, uh, my race jacket, and my uh, race pants that I just got. And... Uh, Started hanging some pictures up. We got some of the track photos from Frostbite. A little tire off the ground action right there. We got Zorro, my son driving Zorro. Some more Frostbite action. Um, next thing, Harbor Freight again. Um, they got these cabinets. So I got two cabinets. Each cabinet has three drawers. Uh, has a lock for each drawer. And they're pretty cool. Um, these are metal cabinets. And we just kind of got some crap uh, slammed in there that we might need at the track. Um, but yeah, they work pretty good. And they're not expensive either. You do have to put them together. Uh, but each cabinet at Harbor Freight, they're 99 bucks, So it's kind of hard to beat that. Um, I thought it was the cheapest way to go to add cabinets to this trailer. Or for that matter, any trailer that doesn't have cabinets. Um, so what we did with those, we mounted them to the, uh, to the wall on the backs. Uh, we got screws mounted into the back of the wall. Um, and then we have screws going into the top of this toolbox on both of them also. Um, and we got screws running through the inside sides of them into the trailer as well. So they're mounted down pretty good. They're not going anywhere. Um, worked out pretty good. I really like those cabinets for a hundred bucks a piece. Not bad. Uh, threw some more decals up here in this area. We got some banners. Um, I'm going to start trying to bring all of my banners and hang them up now when we go racing. We got some, uh, some foam or styrofoam pipe covering to, uh, put on the cables down there for the ramp door. Um, we threw in an air conditioner that I already had that I used at my actual shop, um, where I work. We upgraded to a humongous air conditioner at the shop, so this was not being used anymore, so I figured it'd be perfect for the race trailer. Um, so how we're going to run that dude, I mounted a, uh, a port down there, and it's got a hole through the floor. This comes up. Folds all the way down there, and that's how it vents out the uh, the heat that it makes. And then we just run a, uh, a cord uh, through the floor to my generator um, to run this thing along with this power strip we got from Harbor Freight also that is, is magnetic. Um, so we got a few power spots. We got some USBs. Pretty dope. Um, the other thing I did, because I thought... You know, I may spend the night in this thing sometimes. We might kind of camp out at the track one day or something. 
Um, I thought it was a good investment, so for cheap and insurance, you definitely don't want to dye anything. So we put a carbon monoxide meter in here. It's just battery operated. Um, and then we put a smoke alarm in here also. I felt like it was better safe than sorry, so um, we put them in. There you go. And then this toolbox, we loaded it with, uh, I already had a whole tool kit from Harbor Freight that's like 200 bucks that I used to carry in my truck all the time um, in the toolbox. And that tool kit literally for $200, it has a ton of tools. Um, now they're not Mac, Snap-on, stuff like that, but hey, they get the job done, they work. Um, for a $200 toolkit that gives you basically almost everything you need, um, if, especially if you're in an emergency, you have a lot of tools. So I took that toolkit and I loaded the toolbox up with that and uh, actually sawzalled it up to make it kind of fit in here so it'd stay organized. But um, so, so yeah, like here's the, that would be the top and then this was the bottom of it. Um, so you have all your half inch drive uh, sockets extension ratchet um pretty much you know most of your sockets short and deep metric and standard you know right there nicely organized hard to beat that um they give you a set of you know torque screwdrivers some uh phillips and flat screwdrivers some itty bitty stuff you know adjustable wrench needle nose side cutters some uh flat nose pliers right here um, and they all lock in so that like I get said I cut this up when my saws all and uh, Instead of buying, you know Organizers and everything that I think just works great for me. So it'll get the job done um, Same thing. This was the middle section of that toolkit all your 3 8 drive stuff You got a little tiny breaker bar long extensions three and six Eight you got quarter inch sockets standard and metric um, you got your 12-point stuff, 6-point stuff, um, tall, metric, and standard sockets. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a good kit. For 200 bucks. you get a lot of tools. Um, and then it keeps going. This is another section out of that kit. Uh, you get a set of wrenches. Obviously, what's missing already? Really? I'm already missing the 10-millimeter. Lord knows where my 10-millimeter is. Um, but then you got, you got your standard metric Allens. Uh, you got some swivels, quarter and three eighths and half inch in there. You got some special uh, six point sockets here, reverse torques, whatever you want to call it. You got a whole bunch of bits, um, all your Phillips flats, squares, torques, you name it. You got it. It's in there. Metric standards. Um, plus this little plastic thing opens up, so that keeps it enclosed. Hard to beat that. Um, and then I had some leftover name brand stuff that I wasn't using. This is all Mac. Uh, nut drivers uh, this is the metric side nut drivers and then I had the same thing in the standards I got the met, uh, standard Mac drivers uh, some drill bits some junk what else did I put in here um, that thing is awesome um, that's a channel lock it goes very wide and uh, this actually is the best thing I've found so far to adjust my core 4x4 bars um, because it opens much larger than most of these other ones like this one is actually bigger But doesn't open as wide as that one, which is crazy. But yeah uh, What else I put in here? Oh, yeah, we got uh stickers um, I guess you would call it the the Mopar frostbite swag drawer um, Yeah, I want to mention this. This is uh from cope racing uh, John cope CRT my trans builder um, the man as far as transmissions goes for the mopar world um frostbite made the cover man yeah so i got a bunch of those in here um and look at that frostbite right there kind of goes over the stuff that's in frostbite i got a bunch of those i can kind of hand out uh to people we got carnage uh exhaust stuff in here flyers uh i got some business cards in there from them so yeah just kind of making that kind of like my swag drawer um got my actual straps in here and uh looks like we got a barrel fuel barrel spout some extension cord three-way splitter so yeah i think that's about all we got going up in there so far um oh the other thing the vent 
we got to work on this a little bit. Um, this thing works great still, uh, but the little knob is broken, so you kind of got to hold your mouth just right. And this is kind of getting old and uh, decrepit. It's starting to crack, and it's kind of sun bleach, so we're going to replace this little vent thing. And it also has this little screen that goes up there as well, but you kind of tell it's kind of old and yellow and grungy. Um, so, yeah. Um, oh yeah, the other thing we mounted, I mounted some anchors in the floor on both sides of this air conditioner. Um, that way when we're in transit, I can run a strap over it, strap it to the floor because we don't want that thing rolling around anywhere. Um, so yeah, that's kind of uh, what I've been doing the last couple weeks. I've been behind on videos because I've been occupied with this thing. This has been a pretty big project. Um, not to mention my regular uh, uh, shop. Um, that pays the bills. Uh, we are in full swing. It is summertime and uh, business is absolutely crazy good. So, um, yeah, got to get that work done. Got to make that got to make that money. Right. So that is uh, what we've been doing lately. Um, I know you guys are probably curious what's up with this. Uh, so that is my new toy. Um, for those that know me. No, I'm not really a motorcycle guy. I honestly, I don't know much about motorcycles. I owned a motorcycle one time in my life about uh, seven, eight years ago. And I only had it for a couple months because I thought I was going to drive it from where I live all the way down to where I used to work before I uh, opened up my own shop, which is, it's about an hour ride. And it's not the best of traffic and friendliness down where i used to work lots of people lots of cars lots of traffic and uh, the short story version is the two or three months i had the motorcycle it seemed like every time i rode it i was getting ran over almost um so i just kind of said this isn't for me and i got rid of it um and that was that so now i got my own shop i'm not far from work at all it's a 10 minute ride if that i thought it would be kind of fun to get a motorcycle and put it back and forth to the shop and uh, since I kind of live out here in the country I might actually be able to you know ride this thing on the weekend or something sometime um, but for those that know about motorcycles they probably know what this thing is um, for those that don't this is a 2006 Yamaha uh, Roadstar Midnight Warrior um, this thing is for a 2006 it is absolutely gorgeous as you can tell uh it looks just as good in person as it does on this video um this thing is super super clean super nice very very nice bike the owner that sold me this bike had it since day one original owner um and i'll tell you he did not want to sell this bike at all like it really hurt his feelings but obviously i don't think he he really needed it laying around. He had a couple of new motorcycles already. Um, but obviously he just, you know, he was probably attached to this thing physically. Had it since day one. Rode it a lot. Um, so I feel like I got a good bike. This thing runs great. Um, it is, it's awesome. Um, so this thing, it's a 1700cc uh, 102 cubic inch motor um, is what this bike is has which in motorcycle worlds i guess you know that's, that's pretty big it's definitely way more than i need um, because i am not going to race the bike i'm not going to try to do anything stupid with the bike i'm going to try to ride it and not get dead and just enjoy it that's my plan so i think it's more than enough for what i'm planning to do and uh yeah we're gonna we're gonna race the truck and uh stay there but yeah um that is a new toy. Maybe I'll do some videos on this thing in the uh, future. Maybe do a little ride with the GoPro or something. But um, yeah, I still have to get my motorcycle license. I don't even have a motorcycle license. So I got to get my motorcycle license first before I can really enjoy this thing and ride it around. Um, I'm probably going to do one of those riding courses. Uh, I don't know. It may be lame, but some people suggested it. And since I don't really ride a motorcycle much, it's probably a good idea. I'm sure I'm going to learn something. And it's probably definitely worth the couple hundred bucks. 
uh, to take the you know two-day motorcycle school and plus you get to ride their bikes um, so if I drop one or scratch it you know it's their motorcycle and that's what they're there for to learn on instead of taking this nice pretty thing out and screwing it up which I definitely don't want to do because I am picky as a lot of people probably know I am OCD very picky with how my stuff looks um, I want to keep this bike looking like this and even better in the future. So um, I'd rather learn and take the course on something else besides taking this out there and possibly messing it up. So yeah, um, if there's any motorcycle guys out there on the channel that ride bikes, comment down below what you think, maybe what I should do, what I should watch out for. Um, yeah, any advice, I'll take it. So comment down below. Don't forget, uh, give the video a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet. Lots of content to come up. Um, I got lots of footage, guys. I just got to get to it, got to edit it, and uh, basically get caught up. Like I said, it's just been nuts with work and keeping everything, kind of keeping the wheel turning and, you know, not running out of oil and logging up on me. So we're still here. We're getting ready. Um, we're going to try to hit uh, maybe Michigan here soon. Um and go racing up there again like we did last year. So stay tuned, more stuff to come. And as always, stay safe out there. We'll see you guys on the next one.